Hey guys, today was the first day of Microsoft's annual Fabric conference, and they released a pretty big feature, user-defined functions. They're calling them user data functions. And from what I understand, they're pretty much just rebranded Azure functions, which I've used quite a bit. So I'm pretty excited. Let's go take a look at how they're implemented. So first things first, this feature just moved from a private preview into a generally available public preview. So you have to go into your tenant and you have to enable the preview feature. I just did that in my trial tenant. And so I got this notification that the tenant settings will be applied within the next 15 minutes. So while we're waiting, let's talk about how I've used Azure Functions in the past. Now, Azure Functions are essentially like little servers. You can give them some C-sharp code, you can give them some Python, and they can just take those inputs and produce an output, and they can do it consistently over and over and over again. Where I've used Azure Functions super extensively in the past is essentially converting data to Excel and storing it on a SharePoint. Yes, you can do this with Power Automate. Yes, you can do this with Logic Apps, but it gets real wonky with like the whole SharePoint is the file checked in or checked out kind of thing. And Python can do it a lot better just using the SharePoint API and then exporting from Pandas into essentially an Excel file. So what I've done in the past is I've built an Azure function that I can essentially just give it a SQL query. It saves it as an Excel file on a SharePoint. Now, I just got back from dinner, and unfortunately, the user data functions feature isn't enabled on my personal tenant. Now, this might be because I'm using a Microsoft Fabric trial. It might be because I have something wonky in my tenant settings that I'm not catching, but I fiddled with it, and I couldn't make it work. So the, what I had planned for this video was giving you a quick little demo of how to write one, but I figured instead we could review the documentation so you could have a better understanding and then we can take a look at some of the other features that were released in the Microsoft Fabric conference today during all of the keynotes. Okay, so here we are in the documentation and here you can see the user interface. As you can see, there's gonna be a code window and you can publish the function. And then you also should be able to connect it to various different things. So the first thing you can do is you can connect it to a data source, right? So you can connect it to a um, anything that's part of the one link, right? The next piece is you can essentially call it with data pipelines. You can also call it with notebooks. So going back to the example that I had earlier in this video, we could write a function that could be used in a pipeline that would, you know, either transform data or save data or email data somewhere special right that's maybe different than what they have for a standard pipeline and it would just work all right so with that out of the way let's take a look at some of the other features they released today during the microsoft fabric conference so here is their blog post where they're talking about everything they've released through the, the fabric conference the first thing they talked about is one lake security so that's defining security roles uh, with sql for example the next thing is oh, they had a lot of AI features, so Fabric Data Agents, and they always call it Agenic AI, I believe. I've heard different people pronounce it different ways, right? They then talk about migration, and then they, they spent quite a bit of time talking about uh, AI and Copilot. And then finally, they talked about their platform enhancements, so that would be the CLI, the CIDC, the user data functions that I was trying to demo, <laughs> uh, essentially a new Terraform provider. I haven't heard about that one. Um, and then the general availability of the tags feature of Microsoft Fabric, which by the way, I need to make a video on that. They then also have some new Gen 2 features, database mirroring. They have the Apache Air, uh, Airflow job scheduler, which is really cool. Uh, DAGs are essentially an orchestration tool that allow you to do out some pretty cool things. That's kind of a data engineering feature. We have the new copy job, right? And then right here again, they're calling out the new orchestration enhancements. Um, they also then talk about data factory enhancements. The real-time uh, features, I haven't followed that closely. Uh, the data engineering and data science enhancements, they had uh, some billing stuff, and then again, they talked about AI 
for quite a bit of time. And here's another section around AI and another section around AI. Um, and then finally they start to talk about their partners. So I'll link this blog post down in the video description so you can go and read it along with the documentation around user data functions. This isn't quite the video that I hoped it would be, but I hope you enjoyed it, it still. If you're interested in business intelligence, um, mainly Power BI, SQL, a little bit of Python here and there, please consider subscribing and following me on LinkedIn. And with that, I hope you have a good evening.